been about 45 minutes. Um, the dough is looking really good, but you can tell that it started to kind of change a little bit, starting to rise and even out. So typically when we make this dough, um, I don't like to get the counter or the table dirty at this stage. Um, and I have been doing this initial round of stretch and folds inside the bowl itself. So let's try that today. We are going to want to dust um, both your fingers and the top of the dough here, a little bit of the flour. And so it wants you to do stretch and fold, which means we're basically going to scoop around to the front of the dough and then fold it back over itself. We're going to turn the bowl 90 degrees and repeat the same process, turning 90 degrees. Um, well, the directions say to do it four times. Um, I've been doing it eight times, um, sort of two rotations. So let's give that a try. Just like that? Mm hmm Yeah, pull the torch, it kind of tack it down to itself, and then turn the bowl. Same thing. Yeah, you can see the dough is very sticky. <laughs> so the dough at this stage is incredibly wet. And you'll find with a lot of doughs like this that they can kind of tell if you're afraid. So you have to just kind of complete your actions with confidence, move your hand quick, and it's when you start to slow down your movements that the dough's gonna to stick to you quite a bit. Yeah, that looks pretty good. So what I would do now is you're probably gonna to wanna to get a little bit more flour in there. And I would try to kind of take that whole dough ball and flip the whole thing over. It's okay. So what we've done now is we've 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 made a mess. So that part of the process is done. Um, we've stretched the dough a little bit and helped it form some more structure with the gluten. And now we're just going to take this again cover it just like we did before, and pop it back in the oven again with just the light. Don't turn your oven on. Um, we're gonna let it rise for 45 to 75 minutes, and we'll see you then. And we're back after the second rise. The dough is looking great, it's puffed up. Definitely looks lighter. And what we're gonna do now is take the dough out of the bowl, and we're gonna shape it and put it into a loaf pan. So if you wanna get a little flour on your fingers, dust a little flour on the table. And you remember it's a pretty wet dough, so you don't have to be too stingy on the flour. You can you can put a good amount down, it won't hurt the dough. Oh yeah. Excellent. Here's this. And you'll watch it come out. Looks like it's uh, really <laughs> keep make sure you don't cut the dough, get a, get as much out of that bowl as you can. You can see how long the uh, the fibers are. The the gluten has done a great job. Yeah, grab whatever you can out of that bowl and stick it into the dough. Excellent. So you're gonna want to put some flour on top. You want to turn it into a dough ball. So you want to take the dough and kind of wrap it into a circle. Underneath. Yeah, I probably scoop from the bottom, like lift it up. Yeah, and then yeah. There you go. Perfect. You want to sort of tuck the sides underneath over and over again. It's sticky stuff, so don't forget to keep your hands covered in lots of flour if you need it. There you go. That's the motion. <laughs> and so as she's doing this, you can see that the top surface is starting to get a little bit of tension in it. You can see these bubbles starting to pop out on top. Those are fine. Uh, but that just shows you you've got the strength going on the outside of the dough. That looks great. If you want to keep doing a little bit more, just to make sure it's in a nice firm ball. How are your fingers? Nice and dry? Mm, yeah, for the most part. Okay. So it feel like a good, good dough ball? Mm, I don't know. Okay. So what you probably want to do so it doesn't stick too much is to get is to lift the dough up and put some more flour underneath. I'm going to sprinkle it. Got it? There you go. Pop that down. Excellent. There it is. <laughs> that looks great. All right. So you can see these little bubbles on the surface here. Those are great. That means you've got some good tension on top. And now we wait 20 minutes. Well, we're back. 
All we have left now to do is final shaping. We're going to fold the dough a couple of times, pop it in the loaf pan, and then we just have to wait for the dough to rise. Turn the dough over so the seam is facing up. So we're going to want to take the part that we tucked underneath before. You might want to put a little flour on top so it doesn't stick when you flip it. We're just going to basically flip the dough over. And you kind of rub on the top. Mm. Perfect. Flip it right over. Nice. So now we have, you can see we have the seam on top. What we're going to do now is do a couple of folds to start to form it into sort of the log shape you need to put it into your loaf pan. So the first one is we're going to take the, this top right hand corner here, and we're going to pick up that corner and fold it down into the middle of the dough. Like that? Yep, give it a little push so it sticks. And then you're going to take the top left hand corner and do the same. Perfect. Now you're going to take that sort of the top piece mm -hmm. and fold it all the way back to the to the bottom. Nice. Now you can kind of pick it up and put it down on that seam. Then you just kind of want to wiggle the dough around a little bit to form it into sort of a log shape. Yeah. And so with it sort of tucked in like that, sometimes the edges can get a little too pointy. And that's really all you have to do. That's the shape that you need for the loaf. That's going to rise up perfectly. So all you got to do, drop it in the pan. There you go. Nice. So all we need to do now is cover this again and pop it in the oven. The only thing I would uh, warn you about is if you put plastic on top of this and there's not much flour there, when you go to pull the plastic off later it will stick and it will tear the top of the bread. So it might be nice if you want to sprinkle a little bit of flour on top. Perfect. Just going to give that a little rub so it's got nice even coverage. And we're going to pop it back in the oven. Again, we just have the oven with the light on, but not the oven on. We don't want to cook the bread quite yet. And what we're going to do is we're going to pop it in the oven, and we're going to wait until this loaf um, rises up, and it's about um, a half an inch or a quarter of an inch over the rim of the dough pan, or the loaf pan. Mm -hmm. uh, I guess right now it's a dough pan, and later it will be a loaf pan. Yes. We'll see you then. Welcome back. We just got home. We were out doing a couple of errands, and we took a look at the oven, and the loaf looks perfect. It's risen just above the edge, which is great. You don't want to let it rise too high before you put it in the oven, because um, sometimes it'll collapse while it bakes. That's called overproofing. So you just want to give it a chance to kind of rise a little bit above this rim. Um, I just turned the oven on, so as soon as the oven is ready, we're going to pop this in. The directions say to cook it at 425 for five minutes. Then you step it down to 375 and you cook it for another 30 minutes. You kind of want to take a look at it, see how it goes. Um, so this is great. So far we've had some pretty good success. Mm -hmm. And I can tell you, I am looking forward to that warm bread smell in the house. It's going to be so good. Oftentimes when I make bread, I like to use a lot of whole wheat flour, but oftentimes it just tastes... Whole wheat. Whole wheaty. <laughs> Um, but this loaf of bread specifically, even though it has a lot of holy flour in it, doesn't. It just tastes great. Mm. Really good bread flavor. So light and soft. It's a great loaf of bread, so I'm excited. Me too. Alright, the oven's toasty. It's toasty in here. <laughs> and the last step just before we put it in the oven is you want to score the top of the loaf. You don't have to, it's optional. Um, but if we put a, a line straight down across the top of the loaf, it will help the loaf uh, rise in the oven the way we'd like it to. I should stop putting the knife around. <laughs> Um, if you don't do that, you might end up with a blowout on the side. It's nothing of the world. So I'll show you how to do that. I'll do half, and you can do the other half. You don't want to go too deep. Just kind of scoring the top of the loaf. And if you want to, you can continue it down, or you can turn the loaf around and do the other way, whatever you like. There you go. I think it looks great. It's going to rise well. Good morning! <laughs> we have made our bread. We have. We baked it last night. It came out great. Smelled great. Um, still smells good. Yeah. Here it is the next day. You can see it's still nice and soft. It's a little bit of a crust on top, but the loaf itself looks great. So Ali's going to do a slice so you guys can see what it looks like. Texture looks really good, smells really good. Mm -hmm. 
I think we might have to turn that into some toast here pretty quick. Yeah, make grilled cheese and tomato soups. Yeah. <laughs> so thanks for watching, and uh, we hope we'll see you guys soon with some new videos on our channel for Grown at Home. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.